so today's presentation uh, is on milk fish. This is a very famous fish in uh, Southeast Asia, in Philippines, Indonesia and all. So in 2010, uh, I took up five projects myself at my personal capacity as my social responsibility for my country and to earn something from it and to give a lot of benefits to the farmers and to the markets. Four failed and four projects failed and only milk fish is still alive and kicking. So I want to tell you about whole milk fish story. So far we have gone and what I see for next 10-15 years. So this is milk fish. Many of you may not have seen this one. This is a fish which looks like, uh, you know, it's called darling fish. It's a beautiful fish. Anybody, when they go to the market, if they find it, they love to buy it. But the problem is, it's like carp. It's very much like carp. It's, I call it as marine carp. The carp fishes which we can grow in marine uh, condition, salt water condition. It has bones in it. So those people who don't know how to eat a fish, a good fish eater, for him it is a trouble. But for an avid fish eater, it is not a problem at all. So contents of my, uh, my presentation, core concept and challenge. Why this milk fish? Milk fish or butter fish? It doesn't matter to me, but there is some basic principles here and that I want to come to. Uh, and then Indian fish consumer behavior, nature and need of the Indian aqua farmers, trends in fish production and demand, forcing vacuum in aquaculture, how milk fish can bridge that gap, our efforts to make it a successful food commodity in India and projections and impacts, what we envisage from this, uh, this particular species. So I was told when I, I, you know, uh, this topic was given, please look at broader side. What is the impact of it? Why we are doing all these things? So I have broadened this topic and uh, I try to finish it within 30 minutes, around the 25 slides of that. So the core, core concept is fish for all, that I have taken from NFTB, it is the theme of NFTB. Fish for all in India, what it means to me is to fill the stomachs of crows, in, for after my African friends, I can tell crows in India means it's a, a billions, okay, so that's the thing. So. Uh, to, to, to fill the stomach, that means to feed the people. We have 1.25 billion people in India. So how to feed them, that is a core challenge. Then to fill the pockets of lakhs of farmers, millions of farmers, by providing them a massively producible and marketable species in India. These are the two things, producers and consumers. We have to bridge a gap there. Indian consumers, what we see at the last five years, I have closely worked with Indian customers from various parts of India, from Delhi to Trivandrum, from uh, uh, from Bengal to uh, to Surat, and all all the parts of India to see what the people, fish consumers want, what is their need. We have in India 60% non-vegetarian people. 40% are pure vegetarian, as we know. That means 75 crore people are fishitarians, we can say. Out of that, around 70 to 80 percent are middle class and aspiring class, that is, you know, other words we call as poor class people. And there is hypersensitivity for any rise in food prices. And this rise in food price can topple the government. It can create political problem, demographic problem, everything, what not, all the problems. 
So we need to government's first priority is food price, inflation control. So how to bring it? So we provide them affordable food. Fish is one of the important commodity in the eastern part of India and also southern part of India, in Kerala, Goa, uh, in East Bengal, Assam uh, and other parts. So anywhere fish price of about 100 to 200 rupees per kg, that is uh, uh, 2 to 4 dollars, that is the affordable price for Indian consumers. So if it goes beyond that, then there is problem. Then there is a big problem that people change, shift their uh, protein, uh, uh, what we say is choice. They go to chicken or other low health food. Fish is high health food. So we need to offer them high health food. That is our challenge. So our farmers, what they want? What is their behavior? Our aqua farmers, majority of them, I can say 60, uh, 80, more than 80 percent are small and marginal scale farmers having uh, two acres, one acre, five acre farms. It is, uh, you know, it's uh, production by masses, as Gandhiji said, it is uh, independence. What it means? Giving, employing each and everyone in the rural and wherever, all over the place. So, Production by masses, this is the basic uh, nature of, of the farming community. <coughs> so, they face a lot of uh, rural challenges, rural development related challenges. They have poor access to capital and markets. This is another big challenge what they have. I have just listed key points here, not all the problems they are facing and how we are trying to mitigate them. So, what they need the present aqua farmers, what they expect from the, the scientific fraternity or from the entrepreneurs. They want a easy to grow fish, which gives them good yield, fast growth, low uh, use of feed, and which can be grown in versatile environment. India has several uh, climatic zones and also uh, saline areas. So, if we can provide a fish which can be grown in very large, uh, uh, you know, uh, different kind of climates, then it will be very useful. Fish can be easy to market, that fish should be easily marketable in the local market and to the other states, interstate exports. Now, I am not talking about exports to the other countries. Low investment and reasonable profits. Low investment because farmers have very less capital with them and the, the banking, the, the capital access from the banks is very poor in rural uh, areas. So how to make them uh, to, to grow the fish with minimal uh, capital investments? So that is also a matter. So low risks, another important aspect for the farmers, they don't want to take any high risks. That means diseases, resistance to flood, climate change patterns, saline intrusion, all these aspects will come. So how we make the farmers very resilient, uh, that, is, that is the key challenge for us. So far, the fish production and demand, the trends, you know, we have, so, I mean, our own graph of production, we produce about nearly 10 million tons of fish in India, 100 lakh tons of fish. In that, about 60% uh, comes from aquaculture. Uh, nearly 65 percent and another 35 percent comes from uh, uh, marine fisheries. So if you look at overall, we dissect the things, only freshwater aquaculture, I mean fish production is increasing, but there is stagnation, absolute stagnation or slight decrease in marine fish production. And the reason is that we have solid uh, aquaculture in uh, freshwater, that is carp and fungus. We together we are producing about 6 million tons, 5.5 to 6 million tons. Uh, I, I hope I am right. Anybody statistics, right? Okay, that's uh, so that is the latest uh, information from Ministry of Agriculture. So, this freshwater fish in India we have two different behavior or habits, feeding uh, fish feeding habits by people. 
In the eastern market, they love freshwater fish. In the southern and western market, they love the marine fish. So, the carps in the eastern market, because the lot of there is lot of uh, carp production and pangasius production, and even in the northern market, it is also mostly uh, uh, freshwater oriented. So we can see price stabilization or slow increase along with the inflation rate. We can see a slow increase in fish prices. There is no, you know, um, huge changes or fluctuations in the fish prices. Whereas if you go towards south. We see a lot of change in fish price. For example, mackerel. Uh, in the month of uh, October, November, we can get it for 100 rupees a kg. Uh, in the month of uh, uh, May, April, May, June, we, it goes to 250 rupees. 200 percent increase in the price. So again, it's a seasonal thing because marine capture fisheries. So that kind of challenges are there in marine fisheries. <coughs> So, what we see, the forcing uh, vacuums in aquaculture, if I see, is there is need for a suitable brackish water and marine aquaculture species. Today, if we see, for example, in Andhra Pradesh, this state alone, the biggest challenge what I see 10 to 20 years down the line is salt water intrusion because of so many dam constructions and the uh, so many, you know, uh, channelizing the water for industrial development, for the population, urbanization and all. So we see the freshwater farms near the coastal areas like Krishna district uh, uh, and other parts like West Godavari, East Godavari, they see a tremendous shortage of freshwater. And aquaculture in the government priority list, it is at the last priority. The first is for drinking water. Uh, then, uh, you know, industrial supply, urbanization, this, that, and all. Then agriculture. Then finally is aquaculture. So they can stop water for aquaculture at any time. That is not the priority. So this is the challenge. But there is huge volume of uh, brackish water available just next to them in the drains. We can take that. So that is the opportunity. So for that, we need to have a suitable brackish water species which is very similar to the existing species. So, and also, there is need for uh, diversification of freshwater aquaculture. So, people are fed up maybe with only one or two species, and they accept any more, and another four or five species, definitely they accept. So, they need it. And cage culture. Cage culture is upcoming in India, lot of reservoirs, lot of brackish water areas, lakes, we can find lot of potential for cage culture, especially all over India, I can say. So, at the moment, we have only two, three species, including pangasius and tilapia. But milkfish is one of the fantastic species for uh, cage culture. And uh, in worldwide, about the one lakh ton of uh, milkfish is produced only in cages. So, this is the uh, alternate species. So, how the milk fish can bridge the gap? So, we have such challenges in fish, fish production and uh, markets. So, how the milk fish can help us to bridge that gap? Let us see. Why? Why milk fish? It is not an imported species wherein we require a lot of import risk analysis. There is no need. It is locally available all through uh, Indian, uh, all along Indian uh, coastal area, including Andhra Pradesh, uh, uh, West Bengal, uh, Odisha, Karnataka, up to Gujarat. It, it is available naturally, but at, at very, very low, uh, low quantities. So it is not marketed in a big way because it is not available. It is very sustainable species. When we talk about any farming activity, sustainability, environmental sustainability, social sustainability, and overall sustainability matters a lot for us. So, being a herbivore species or omnivore species, this one, like cows, it can sustain next 100, 200, 500 years of uh, food requirement of people. So, it is like rice, it is like cows. So, this is what we need 
for uh, Indian kind of population and demography. Affordability, affordable species we require. People don't have much money in their pockets. They are very sensitive, as I told. So they require 100 to 200 rupees per fish. So milk fish is a fish which can be sold at less than 200 rupees at retail. Suitability for polyculture system. Our small scale farmers want to grow, hedge their risks uh, with the diff, uh, you know, growing different species in same ponds. So they can put scampi freshwater ponds, they can put uh, other shrimp species, they can grow other uh, fin fish species along with the milk fish. That is the advantage. Uh, in Indonesia it is happening at this moment. Uh, milk fish and shrimp together, black tiger shrimp. People are very happy. If one, if the shrimp gets disease, then at least they get the income, very good profit from milk fish. So they had their risk. So massive production, capacity to produce massive volumes, what we call blue revolution. Many people uh, term it uh, in different ways. I define it. If we are not able to produce, one species cannot get at least, say, one lakh tons, one lakh to five lakh tons. It cannot contribute for blue revolution in a bigger way, significant way, because our total production is 100 lakh tons. So I am talking about 1% of it. So this particular species can definitely cross one lakh tons in India if efforts are put in a, uh, in a right manner with a lot of patience. Adopts to wide range of salinities, climate change, farming system, as I told you, any freshwater, brackish water, marine, you know, in marine environment, we can grow the same species. So we can use it for all people, pan Indian uh, taste buds, we can use it. Because the taste of the fish changes according to the water conditions. If it is freshwater, it is bland taste. It is, if it is seawater, it is a bit salty. So, the taste changes. It is like we can custom design the same species uh, to the people's name. One more thing, important issue is uh, India is lagging in uh, deep sea fishing. Uh, one of the recent reports uh, I would like to uh, remind ourselves, uh, Dr. Meena Kumari report uh, is trying to, um, you know, give importance to deep sea fishing. One of the reasons why we lack uh, in deep sea fishing, especially tuna resources, is that we don't have suitable bait. So milk fish is one of the super baits found by Japanese and Koreans. And the last year I went to Indonesia for this purpose, for International Poland Line Federation, they called me, for this particular purpose. So we can use it. So imagine, we are sitting on a gold mine of tuna. It is to the tune of, uh, government says about uh, $700 million. I can say it is about $1.5 billion, about nearly about 10,000 crores. So that is sitting idle because lack of proper bait. I mean, of course, so many other things are also there. So we can tap it so, to contribute to blue revolution too. So, now, how we achieve this milk fish? So, first thing is that in aquaculture, we need seed and feed and market. These three are important things. Seed. So far, we are collecting it from the white. It is available in Krishna Godavari Bay, in Chilka Lake, in Odisha, Rameshwaram in uh, southern uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, in uh, Karnataka in small quantity, and Kerala, northern Kerala in Maloba region. We can get it. It uh, naturally enters into the brackish water regions. So, but it is not sustainable because we are catching wild, wild uh, uh, seeds. It will, it will, it will imbalance the nature ecology. So we need to, if we, if at all we are going for aquaculture, sustainable production, we have to think of agri. So, we built a solid public-private partnership. My hatchery, Aditya Fish Hatchery with the ICR, Indian Council for Agriculture Research, which is a central government agency under the same Ministry of Agriculture. 
we have built one solid uh, uh, partnership. As a result, we from the country. So, in Indonesia, in in Philippines, there is one international agency called CEPTEC. They are the first one to breed this species in 1978 and 82. They closed the life cycle. They put uh, approximately in today's uh, uh, cost about 50 crore rupees to develop this this brush talk and this whole program with the help of Canadian government, USA and Japanese JICA and the local government. They called it National Tangus Breeding Program. Today, sir, every year the the retail price if you consider the contribution to the national GDP of that country is worth that is a small country of about uh, 20 crore people, Philippines. This contributes to about 3,000 crore rupees. Imagine, every year 3,000 crores it adds to the economy. With just 50 crore rupees uh, investment on that bush stock. So bush stock becomes the backbone of anything. So, I mean, why I am saying is that today we have an army, but still we are dependent on American uh, companies to do that or there is some problems internally. So we have to be self-sufficient. We cannot depend on anybody to feed our own uh, big population. So we need to have a very strategic planning for all these things. It takes 10 years. It doesn't matter. But if we do that, next 100 years, we will be pensionless. There is no problems because our farmer's behavior is that stampede behavior. It is not one, one farmer today, next day it is not two. From one, it is next is ten. Ten to hundred, one thousand. So it is exponential kind of acceptance of any new things. New things. See, we have seen in Manami, what happened in 2010? Maybe hundred tons production. By 2015, it is four lakh tons. Fourteen. This is huge production. Banga shares of this so, so much. So we need to be well prepared with the eventuality. So we need the bush stocks, we need all the things in place. So that's important. So our commercial hatchery is capable to do that. You know, we can join with government, we can join with other private investors. We have to do this. So that is our aim. Who gets what is not important. Who makes the money. But the prosperity is, uh, you know, include all. Inclusiveness is very important for me. This is the hatchery. See, some of the photos I am seeing. See, hatchery we grow it uh, just 1.2 centimeters, 12 millimeters, very small, 20 days old. This is uh, how we pack it in one box, small size. Uh, we can pack about 20,000 seeds and we can send any any place across India from Andhra Pradesh. Maybe Kerala, maybe to Assam, Manipur, wherever. This is the seed, how it looks. These are taken from Southeast Asia. So farming futures, features and progress. So far, how much uh, progress we made. So as I said, it is fast growth, 100 grams per month, 3 to 4 months crop, very fast cash flow for the farmers. Cash rotation is very fast. Market size is 200 to 350 grams. So very, very attractive to the people and to the consumers. So a one, a farm, a consumer with 50 rupees in his hand can buy easily one fish. So that is the proposition to the consumers. So yield is minimum two tons per acre if it is semi-intensive. If it is very extensive, without feeding, we can take easily 200 kg per acre leading to, say, in today's price, it can lead to 20,000 to 30,000 rupees for farmers within three to four months with only investment on the seed, say, about 2,000, 3,000 rupees. Where else you can get this kind of uh, returns, 10 times returns? So this is, this is hap happening uh, in some other country. So hardy species, as I said, is very hardy and very easy for our small-scale farmers. Feed is nothing but lab lab, that is benthic algal mat. No need to worry a lot with sunlight and uh, 
the natural fertility in water, it can uh, develop the lab lab. So readily, if it is semi-intensive, it readily accepts the pellet feed, a lot of floating pellets it can accept. With FCR of about 1.5 or 2 is to 1, so which is very economical. So low cost of production, less than 70 rupees. So today, if we look at the market, production and markets, any any agriculture commodity, it is if uh, it is 50 rupees at farm gate, so reasonable profit margin is there for farmers. Around 50,000 to 70,000 rupees he can make if he take any agriculture or aquaculture related activities. So relative profitability here if we take 70,000 rupees is very attractive with minimal efforts. So that is what it offers. Semi-intensive, we can take more than 1 lakh rupees per acre per year. So this is the nursery very in, in West Godavari, how they do. Lot of uh, uh, here we can see lot of uh, benthic algae. This is the benthic algae. So this is the uh, fingerling, just 40 days old. So within 40 days from that small baby you have seen already, it becomes about uh, 7 to 8 centimeter size. So we stock in this kind of ponds, very very badly managed ponds, but this is the pond where it thrives very well because all this benthic algae, it is the primary food of this particular species. So that can eat very well and clean the pond. So by the time the pond is get cleaned, the fish is already market size, 300 grams, they can sell it. So this is my farm, which is you know a bit semi-intensive, so it looks very nice. So this is cage culture in Indonesia, one of the lakes, where in one or two cages they put milk fish also along Alma Tilapia. This is in uh, volcanic crater. This is how it eats the floating pellets. You can see the floating pellets here. It eats like uh, fungaceous, very very good acceptability of floating pellets. This is the fish catch in the Sri Kakulam district, north of Andhra Pradesh. We have done it last year. He sold uh, at 150, uh, 150 rupees at farm gate amount, 120 to 150 rupees at range, farm gate. <coughs> this is done along with the shrimp. It is a polyculture. This is about 400 gram size fish. So beautiful, so shiny, that is how we packed it. So we did the market survey, test marketing for four years, whether this can be accepted all over India, where it is accepted, what, because without knowledge of market, it is waste to, you know, to promote anything. So many people cautioned me, this is a waste fish, but I, I took the challenge. Without empirical evidence, it is, uh, it is not worth to talk anything, you know, to accept the raw understanding because many people talk without having seen this fish or without having eaten this fish because here say somebody says this has pony, so he says okay this is pony, why you are promoting this in India? So this is completely wrong, uh, you know, motion, we need to overcome all these things. So I did test marketing, I tied up with several uh, uh, buyers including uh, Metro Cash and Carry, Reliance, Retails, uh, more, so many uh, things and also traditional markets got to the final lost consumer, final consumer and got the feedback. I called some, you know, many housewives, I took their phone number, I did this study with the help from IIM Bangalore. So they helped me to understand this because my marketing understanding is big zero. So they helped me. So it was fantastic study. I found the housewife, how is their response? How is their husband? Who buys the fish from the market? What is his response? So all these things we got it and we made a wonderful study on that actually. So it's called Darling Fish. So we got 60% of the buyers, repeat buyers. Repeat buying is the basic of, uh, what I say, basic sign of uh, flourishing of any food item or fast moving consumer goods, FMCG. So if there is no repeat buyers, 
that means that is the end of your product. It may be biscuit, it may be rice variety, it may be anything, any any food the, or any even restaurants. If there is no repeat buying, then it is the finish, is the death of that particular product. So we have 60 percent first class pass. So this is the thing. That is all I told you. This is how it looks at one kg fish. I have tried from 200 grams to one and a half kg size. Which size suits well for which market? For example, in Kerala market, 700 grams works well. In Goa market, 1 kg, as the fish grows bigger, the price is better. That's the thing. So, this is, she is my first customer. She is a Bengali. In 2010, I did it in uh, uh, July, actually. 22nd July, I have taken. It is in Mangalore. KFDC, Karnataka government, uh, has helped me to do this survey. So, Okay, that is about milk fish. So what is the projection? What I see, what is my vision for this one? I want to see at least 1 lakh ton by 2020, giving 1,500 crore rupees for national GDP. And 5 to 10 lakh rupees by 2025, giving at least 7,500 to 15,000 crore rupees for national GDP. This is uh, my vision and this is very much achievable. Looking at what happened with other fish, if we can achieve in crops 50, 55 lakh tons, why not 5 lakh tons in this? If we can achieve 5 lakh, 6 lakh tons in uh, pangashas, why not just 5 lakh tons or 1 lakh ton in this milk fish? It is possible. We have the markets, we have to find the market. For us, we have the market for Maruti 800, we have the market for Audi or uh, even BMWs, there is no problem. But it is the positioning of the fish in the market is extremely important. How we sell it? So we need a lot of work on that. It's the grassroots work. So that is about the market and economy, how we are going to uh, help. But what is the impact on the rural people? What is the, who are the primary beneficiaries? I see at least five to 10 lakh rural households with farming background or local labors uh, or uh, the local trading people to get benefit out of this. And what happened in Koleru? Before 1970s, it was a hell on this earth, what I was told, that place, entire uh, Krishna district, because of poverty, because of a lot of problems. One chief minister, his name is Honorable uh, Marichanaredi, he came and said, it seems, look, these fishermen don't have any other option. What they will do in small lake is that, about 250 square kilometers. What we can do? He started, he has given some money for cooperative farming. At that time, farming is very new to Andhra. Just started in 1969. By 1990, it flourished. And today, with that just 250 square kilometers, sir, we are producing 1 million tons of crops and fish, contributing to about 10,000 crore rupees from that area. See how vibrant are those two uh, uh, districts, that's West Godavari and Krishna districts. Fisheries, that aquaculture contributes a lot. If we think similarly, just look at Chilka Lake. Today we see Puri, Ganjam districts and other you know, nearby districts. Lot of poverty, lot of backwardness in that area. I was there just uh, last month. Uh, the director of fisheries called me. If we, that is 1,000 uh, square kilometers, five times, four times than Kodev. If we just introduce this fish in that area, because this is a brackish water species. Koleru Lake is a brackish water lake where the sea water directly enters. Whereas Koleru Lake is landlocked, it is completely fresh water. So carps only can thrive. In Pulikat Lake or in Chilka Lake, Pulikat Lake in Andhra, there is only brackish water. If we just promote this, just ranch it, I can take 1 million tons. And it can supply to entire Indian fish protein needs. This is very simple thing, but achievable thing. So it needs some determination, some dedication, some sacrifices. 
how, who does that, that is very important. That is not one person's job. Each and everyone should involve in that. That is very important. Then, ultimately, what I see is that not only this community is developing, coming to prosperity, you know, a lot of changes, but also we reduce fishing pressure, significant fishing pressure on the sea. Because today, we are stabilized at around 3.6 million tons, metric tons, uh, from the sea. So what will happen if the fishing pressure increases day by day? There is no way. I can, today, last year, this year, we have supplied from the wild earth about 25 million seed only to Kerala in fishery. So just three days back, the Kerala Department of Fisheries visited my hatchery. They have a lot of hopes, sir, because they are they are in hell a lot of problems. Because the fishermen, the local people are just telling, we are not getting any affordable fish. We don't know where to fish and what is our livelihood. Over the challenge, what I feel. So please be, you know, very comfortable. Sir. What is it called in Telugu? It's a There are two names. In northern Andhra, from uh, East Godavari onwards, Vishakhapatnam is called Palapanta. In uh, West Godavari, Krishna district, it is called Tulichapa. Tulichapa. And in Odisha and West Bengal, it is called as, uh, and Assam, it is called as Seba Painga. In Kerala, it is called as uh, Pumi, Khainga, Seba Khainga. And it was there in uh, Chilka Lake, sir. Uh, and it is overfished. Today they catch about 5 tons, only 5 tons. Earlier, uh, 30 years back, they used to catch a lot from Chilka. It's overfished commercial level by March. Much so, that be the only such in the whole country? Or? Yes, sir. It's very difficult, sir. One thing what I have seen uh, in the entrepreneurs here, they want morning they want to put the money, evening they want to get out uh, with a uh, lot of uh, profits. So this is the thing like stock markets. So I am fed up. So when I went to entrepreneurs asking for their uh, investments, so they asked me, what is the gestation period? I said, seven years for waiting for approval.